On this video, we're gonna be restoring this Jazz Radical bike. Got this for just 20 bucks. And luckily and coincidentally, the Timu company reached out to me and offered me some free bike parts and tools for review. Now they actually sent a bunch of other stuff, but today for this project, we're just gonna be looking at these two tires and these grips.
Sorry for the interruption, but I thought one more thing I would show you is this parts bin thing that Timu also sent me. It's been really handy in organizing my parts. Literally all that stuff that's in these. All that stuff was in my toolbox just all in one drawer. So it's really nice to have some some kind of organization here. So, you know, they're cheap bins, no question, and they can't take a ton of weight. But, um, you know, for what they are, they're gonna work really fine for me. Okay, let's try this Timu tire. It has no branding on it at all. Yes, I'm reusing the same inner tube because it was holding air just fine.
I just got done fixing something that had me so frustrated that I couldn't even record it. And what it is is, well, what happened is when I put the rear wheel on, the whole wheel was like shifted over to the left by probably five millimeters. So much so that the tire was just barely rubbing on this chain stay and also up here on the seat stay. So I kind of knew in the back of my head what I had done and what that was is I put the axle in the wrong way, not the way that it was originally put in. So it means I had to take the, the wheel off, of course, I had to take the axle out, rotate the axle, put it in the other way, reload the bearings, put everything back together. And so I just got done with that and now it's like perfectly even, looks beautiful. So I just thought I'd warn anybody watching this, if you ever take your axle out, make sure you pay attention to which way you take it out and don't rotate it because that can throw off the center line of your whole hub. Anyway, the bike itself is looking really good now. I'm getting like kind of excited about it. Uh, I need to still connect the shifter up and put a new saddle on. But other than that, it's coming out pretty good. And I am actually really digging these tires. I mean, I obviously haven't rode on them, so I can't say too much about them, but I'm sure they'll be fine. But these, uh, these Timu tires look really good on this bike. I think it's a great match. Timu also sent me these, what's it called, Bucklose bars. They're uh, risers, I think they're 700 millimeters wide. Originally I wasn't going to put them on this bike, it just, I, just, I just don't like, I don't really like the look of these threadless adapters, but um, the Bianchi stem and bar, it was just like too low and too far forward. So uh, we're going with these, and actually it does look pretty cool. So The bars themselves look pretty good, I mean they're just pretty much basic bars. Uh, I do like the rises in them, in them though and I like how they have quite a bit of information that mentions like the angle and the rise and all those details. Not that I really care that much but it's nice that they at least put it on there. And another thing the Timu company sent you are these ODI grips. So let's go ahead and stick them on. Hopefully they'll work pretty well. They came with uh, the end caps too. They're just normal foam grips. I will say though they're a little bit thicker than like this part. It's thicker than some of the real cheapies I've had before which was a little bit disappointing when they're really thin. These aren't like super thick but these seem unusually tight to get on. I hope I didn't like get the wrong size or something. And they are going. Well, I don't really know what to say about these grips. They were absolutely the most insanely hard grips I've ever had to put on, and I did have to use some lubricant. Uh, but they are on finally. It took like all my strength <laughs> to get these on. But, and so I thought, well, maybe, maybe I ordered the wrong size. I really don't think so. I'll put it on the screen if I did make a mistake. I think they're for, what is this, 22.2 millimeter? Let me check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are for 22 millimeter bars, so I'll put it on the screen if I got that wrong. But then the weird thing is, I thought, okay, well, if if the bars are bigger than these, like maybe these are for kids, kids' bikes or something like that, so they're smaller, then this is going to go on too easy. But no, this has gone on uh, way too hard. As you can see, this paint is all scratched up. I've been hitting it with the hammer, and I still can't get it to quite seat all the way. I even had um, like a punch on the end, and I was hammering it, trying just to focus the the punch in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that to seat or not. So I won't say don't get these grips from Timu or they're bad or something, but um, watch out about the fitment because these were mega tight. They're never coming off without being cut.
Just when I thought the project was all done and the bike was looking great, I went out for a test ride and it mostly r rode really good, except for in some of the lower gears, like the chain would jump. And just a little bit, like junk, 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 you know, just really annoying. So that's why I aligned the derailleur, but that didn't seem to help. I just changed to a new chain and that didn't really help. Um, so now I'm thinking this cassette, and it is a cassette, it's a seven speed cassette, which is a little bit unusual. I think maybe this thing is worn out and it does kind of look rough to be fair. So I don't have another seven speed cassette, but what I do have is this single speed cog. So I'm thinking about disassembling this to try to steal some of these little spacers. Maybe I can also, oops, steal some spacers from this old, this old one. I don't even know where this one came from and make this guy work. So that's the plan. Okay, I got it all working. So this is the spacer that I made. And unfortunately it was just a couple millimeters too short, not because of my cutting, but that's just, be that was the size of that piece of metal that I happened to have. So I had to end up taking a, another cog, putting it on the end, and another one here, which uh, has the, the place that the lockdown can meet. So you, I did need to have that one. This one I only needed though, because my spacer was slightly too small. But that being said, that's the my actual cog that's made for single speed right there, and everything actually works really nice, really nicely. And I'm using the derailleur as the tensioner, which you can do. Um, as you can see, it works totally fine. Um, yeah, you can use a regular derailleur. I'm just using the same one as the tensioner. It really works totally fine. I mean. I would say it's just as good as a tensioner you can buy for 20 bucks, so you can save some money and just do that. And what you do basically is just use the stop screws to set the uh, to set where it's at. So I'm not going to do it again because I already did it. But basically, uh, this one here is the main important one because when you tighten this, it brings the derailleur that way. And then once you get it where you want there, then you just take this one and, and bring it all the way to meet it. And so now it's it's basically locked in place. And you can tune it a little bit if you need to uh, move it just a little bit, but it, it was pretty easy to get almost right away. And basically what you're doing, I know you're not exactly aligned, but basically you're just gonna align your, the center of your cog to the center of the cog on the jockey wheel on the derailleur. So pretty easy to do and it actually works really good. So I think everything is good now. I'm going to give this a ride tomorrow, do some photos. got caught in the rain during my photo shoot. Let's get this photo real quick and get back home. Oh man, it is totally pouring. I don't know if any of those photos even came out. Lovely rain.
All right, everybody, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, just put them down below.